Welcome to War Hospital, where we are drafted in the War Hospital. Yes, uh, being drafted to a War Hospital, where we are acting as a general. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Later on, you'll be able to take a look at what the story entails and stuff like that. But let's start a new game. Yes, as you can see, I have started the game beforehand so that, you know, we can get a little bit more used to the game itself before I present it to you guys. But yes, this game will challenge you morally. Well, I hardly have any left, but that's besides the point. Yes, honor their memory. Hmm. We'll be playing as the medics and basically the hospital behind the front lines. All right. I was unable to stop the events that led to the fact that today I am going to the front and you are no longer there. You cannot imagine how much pain I carry in my heart. With your death, I question the sense of my continued existence. Fate throws me to a place where I might be able to save your colleagues and many others. Hello, sir. My name is Grissing, the head doctor of this hospital. If I may speak freely, sir, we expected more than just an officer's rank to support the current situation. The Hun could break through our lines at any moment now. Hey, yes. doctor, mind your tongue. This is our new commander in charge. Sir, I'm delighted that someone with your experience is joining us. I recall your work in London very well. Praveen Kumar, head engineer. If you want something done, you should come to me, sir. Major Henry Wells. As you all know, I was directed here to manage this hospital. I will count on your professionalism, regardless of your private opinions about me. If I may, sir, we have wounded that are already waiting in casualty clearing station. We should tend to them first. Agreed. We should not let them wait any longer. To start, decisions must be made about their fate, sir. Their files are already waiting for you in Casualty Clearing Station. Finally, I can close and turn off the tutorial. Yes, close and turn it off. Okay, welcome to the world of the War Hospital. Of course, I had to basically keep quiet for a little bit just now because there was narration and stuff. But uh, yes, welcome to War Hospital where we are. The few running the few hospital behind the front lines. Yes, we are running a few hospital behind the front lines instead of actually going into the active front line over here. And of course, we can't really do much in the front line over here. In well, except for just looking at it and probably sending out a few medics there to pick people up. But that's besides the point. <laughs> we'll be mainly focusing on how we run our uh, few hospital in the back and supporting the front line. Of course, at the beginning, you'll be very confused at what is going on. Let's start with the UI first, all right? Okay, so for the UI first, we have all these tabs up here, all right? Which is kind of like little shortcuts that you can use to actually access different parts of your, well, few hospital or hospitalization area or you can easily just click on any of the station right as long as they have let's just say the assignment button over here you'll be able to get into this tab yes once you get into this tab you'll be able to head to medic team and all of these where you will of course set up the schedule work schedule for your uh, personnel over here of course we are running a few hospitals so yeah, get ready for a very tiring work shift but well if i don't do that people are gonna die so you know better alive than dead let's just put it as that we have of course a whole bunch of people for our medic team only one doctor doctors are very expensive all right let's just put it as that but yes okay and over here you see the timeline which will indicate when 
uh, how do I put this? When you have people that recovered from their injuries when they get treated by the doctors and then they go to a rehab center, if you are sending them to the front lines, you'll see on the top over here that they will have a little arrow as well as a little emblem later on. Uh, later on, I'll show you guys that when that actually happens. But um, yeah. Down here you have the time for the train arrival, which is for the train station over here. If the train comes, when the train comes by, you will be able to get this cargo stuff. Yes, you can treat this uh, stuff as kind of like a regular delivery. Down the line, they will decrease. Yes, it's kind of scary. They will decrease, so you need to be careful. Over here, there is personnel and cargo types. Uh, cargo train types, sorry. So, for the personnel types, they will deliver injured personnel, while for the cargo types, they will of course deliver scraps and a little bit of food. So, as you can see, this is the scraps over here, which we will be using to create this thing called medical supplies, or trauma supplies, or chemical supplies, or food, or alcohol. For the other two over here, you can either treat this as a requisition form over here, this 11 over here, or you can treat this more like a drafting form, right? But I would say it's more like a, a requisition form. The game calls it drafting form if I'm correct, but I would say it's more of requisition where you make use of it to order in supplies and only supplies. Ordering personnel requires this thing called the, the manpower, right? This manpower thing. Um, I forgot what is the exact name of it, but yes, the manpower thingy. But if you go ahead and get the manpower um, by spending it on all this, oh boy, down the line you will be strapped for manpower. And once the war kick off, we're gonna be in trouble. And we better be pe prepared for it. Yes, yes. We need to be prepared. If not, we will be in deep trouble. Let us start with describing and talking about our buildings as well before we get too deep into it. Everything will revolve around you getting your patients and stuff like that. So where your patient will mainly be around is your casualty clearing station over here. Which of course we right now have one patient over here, correct? So whenever we receive injured uh, personnel, they will go to the CCS, which is a casualty carry station, which is a mouthful, so I'm going to just say CCS. Then they will go to the CCS and then get transported to the operating ward. Once they have successfully survived the operation, all right, they will be transferred to the rehab center. If they don't, they get a highway to the cemetery. So that is that. <laughs> there is of course our staff lodging where our staff will rest and the canteen where we will control the rations. If we are strapped for resources we can of course cut it down to half ration but our morale will really take a hit and it's not good. So I would like to try to keep on normal rations. I have actually managed to keep on normal rations for one of my test runs. For my first test run, I did not actually manage to do so, but for my second one, I did. So, uh, let's try for that, shall we? Of course, the other one would be our pharmacy over here, where we will send our engineers to this area over here in order to produce surgical supplies down the line. But that will be visited down the line. Uh, right now, we need to build up the pharmacy first before we can ever use it, right? Over here is the train station where, of course, I have showed you before. Over here we have our schedule which we can see what is going to be coming in. And over here we can see what supplies we can get by using our requisition forms and what manpower we can. Uh, for the starters, I would say I want one of the medic, one nurse, as well as one surgeon, if possible. Can I get one more engineer? I can. Interesting. If I don't get the engineer, no, no, I need the engineer in order to uh, fill up some stuff. So let's 
get that down with first. So we put in an order and allocate 9 of our available manpower, of course. That is a little bit risky, but it is what it is. We'll go ahead and of course order some... I think we should get a bit of surgical supplies as a starter. Because let's just say we will be needing our um, surgical supplies very, very quickly once um, everything starts flowing in. And of course, over here, this is our CCS page where we will be able to take a look and see um, our stats for our uh, casualty personnel. Of course, if we click on the mouse wheel over here, we can take a look at what is their status. Okay, you can see over here what their current state is. If they deteriorate too far off to terminal, yeah, they're done so. But the better the state is, the longer we can keep them on the bench over here. Operation time is how long the doctors will have to spend on working with this personnel to actually get them recovered. Operation difficulty is how tired would the doctor be. So this is kind of like a multiplicative effect where if it is one hour, and two stars is two units of stress. If it is two hours and one star, it is also two hour, two units of stress. If it's two hours and two un two difficulty is like four units of stress. Kind of thing you uh, think about managing the workload like that. If uh, you guys need to, you know, <laughs> sort things out inside your head. Uh, down over here, we can see the chances of failure. There's a six star. There's no point aiding them. And then the next one is complication and simplification. So in this game, there is quick fire events, so they will come in randomly. Okay, they will come in randomly, and you would either have a better, um, better event, so the patient actually recovers much more quickly, or it gets worse. It's really in between. So place your bets. <laughs> But for this guy right now, I am gonna shove him into the denied box. As you can see over here, if I hover over the denied box, you can see that this patient will not be operated on. They will be in palliative care until they die. They have a much smaller impact on our morale. And down at the bottom, you can see we are at 50% morale over here. So morale is kind of like your HP. You don't have to worry about it too much until it gets down to like 30%. Because hit points and morale, they are basically a resource for you to use as well. So make full use of it. Don't have too much like labor. Um, but anyways, <laughs> let's get down to assigning our workforce, shall we? So uh, right now we have three medical teams. I do want them to do the casualty clearing station. And one on cemetery. The other one will be used to actually just... Uh, go to the CCS and the cemetery and then they'll just pass around okay once the advanced dressing station is unlocked I will be be forced to use it so we are gonna be strapped for manpower and by the way the shifts right now is on 24 hours so they don't get breaks until I explicitly tell them to take a break so that's gonna be a problem we are of course also going to be throwing both of our nurse into the operating ward just so that we can up the operation uh, chances of getting a successful operation because I do want people to survive. I don't want their head to get chopped off. And then we have our rehab center. I have seen a lot of people play uh, this and focus on rehab center a lot but I, I have a different plan. Stick with me here. Next, we have our engineers. Of course, we can go ahead and assign people to work in pharmacy. This slots over here to actually produce said resource, and we will make use of our base scrap in order to do so. So we are gonna go to improvements, and go to production, and we're gonna start with pharmacy first. Okay? See, you can see the cost over here. Right now, it only takes us one hour and nothing more. So that is very nice to start with. Other stuff that we do want to pick up is possibly this over here where we unlock the ability to actually make more food or we can go ahead and decrease the amount of um, 
script we use when we produce the food itself but for now i will say that we'll go ahead and produce more food in of itself that's fine because i know that we are gonna need to produce our own food because down the line you can see right over here hq is giving us 10 food which is very nice but hq ain't gonna be that nice all the time HQ is gonna give us like 3 food down the line, so be prepared for that and uh, be prepared for starvation. Um, if you plan well enough, you won't get to the point of starvation, but y you know what I mean. <laughs> You'll be fine, all of you are big brain. And we'll go ahead and uh, have a game run on 3 speed of course. And we have our patients arriving in the CCS now. Of course, this guy is just getting tossed into a denied power because he's... Look, certain for death. So, yeah, not not gonna happen. <laughs> not gonna happen. For this guy over here, because he is, even though he's demanding, so you can think of this as six units of labor. Uncertain in terms of uh, actually surviving or in terms of dying, anyways. Um, I think we can save them. For this one, same thing, uncertain 2 units of labor, we should be able to save them real quick. I'll go ahead and do the lighter one first. Up over here, you can see there is this uh, chevrons over here, right? You can see that chevrons, this will basically uh, indicate their value to us because once we help our personnel recover, Alright, we will be making use of our personnel to actually go and either man the front lines to fight off the enemy or get sent back to HQ and let HQ reward us with something. Okay, so right now, as you can see over here, right, there's four and five. These are the indication for how much resources we need to spend in order to recover one personnel. Okay, I, I get it, it's quite in, um, in detail and um, extensive for me to describe all this but it's important so that you know like how everything's everything works so right now we are spending around nine as you can see down here for these people over here and i think it's okay and we'll go ahead and tell our doctor to rest fully before taking any more patients because once okay a good way to think about this is if there is uninterrupted break. It will be more effective because doctors and staff and stuff like that, they take time to travel. Yes, this game is not just acting instantly. They are moving in real time. So if you're sending your doctor to rest and to work very frequently, they will literally have to run across the bridge every single time and waste like 30 minutes. And those 30 minutes are essential to actually saving your patient's life. So let's try not to do that, shall we? <laughs> try not to just run around aimlessly. Okay. Something else I would like to add on is, of course, the X-ray. Because X-rays gives us more chances to actually uh, get a full recovery. So I'm just going to slap on you to actually go ahead and get improvements yes that is the tech tree inside our game tech tree inside our game is quite extensive to be honest um for now that i have played i actually have not played until i max out everything kind of like until they are until halfway so it's quite a good amount of stuff to go through and in this game there is different chapters uh if i'm correct right now we have three chapters with a dlc chapter so yeah if you pick up this game for yourself yeah you can you can be sure that there is a good bunch of uh, content for you to enjoy before you run out of stuff to do again and then get distracted with something else once more <laughs> let's take a look at what is happening of course someone kicked the bucket who kicked the bucket what Oh, that that guy. Um, hmm. Yes, that's why I I assigned my nurse to the operating ward. I was quite expecting them to be enough to um, make it so that the operation operating ward is successful. But uh, it seems not. Even though I had such a good amount of buff, our first one is of course uh, death, which is not really 
FPS. But it's, you know, it's fine. It's not too bad. We'll go ahead and, yeah, you know what? We'll go ahead and recycle uh, these personnel. As you can see, the blue stripes at the corner over here, they start to gray out slowly over time. So these are actually the indicators of the stamina of the uh, characters over here, of our staff over here. So make sure that they don't get to, if I'm correct, it's a little reddish kind of brown as you can see they have a one hour 30 minutes resting period right now so we'll go ahead and send them back we have enough personnel right now to actually do uh the shift manually so that is very nice indeed and so yeah i'm gonna you know what have you know what i'm gonna have one person in the rehab just for now just uh, for a little bit and we'll go ahead and produce our own medicine by assigning our engineers to the pharmacy. I think that's that's a good thing. Because if we produce our own um, supplies, right, we won't need to request supplies on HQ, which is we save a whole bunch of these uh, paper. And uh, those papers are very, very essential. If not, we kind of just uh, kick the bucket very quickly. <laughs> Let's just move as that. Um, Let's see. I do want to unlock amputation sooner rather than later as well as the mob. But uh, we have not gotten to that point just yet. Well, not to the point of uh, morbidly um, being overswamped with work right now. It's just one death. <laughs> I say that like it's nothing but uh, it's, it's not good having the first one as a death. But it's RNG after all. But you know yada yada okay now we have uh oh boy this is this is not the best um okay let me tell you guys uh what is going through my head right now this is a one chevron uh personnel that is injured which is quite badly so they are not doing very well on their stability and over here you can see this guy will cost us six medical supply to actually heal him up. In this case, where our personnel only produces one chevron, okay. If I can show you an example right now, which I can't, every chevron there is will in will give us one um, of these requisition papers if we send them back to the HQ. And in this case, where we schedule a resource purchase. We purchase five for every two paper. You can see the problem now. This guy right now, currently, is actually a liability. Because even if he survives, which means is he might just kick the bucket, you know, I'm just saying. He might just lose all six. And uh, if I heal him and actually traded him in, all he will give me is 2.5 uh, medical supplies back for saving him. And I have to deal with all the workload and all the stress of what my people have to deal with. Which means uh, he's actually not that worth it. And uh, I would even say he's too much of a liability and he'll be tossed into a denied pile. And in this case, this is a 3 chevron guy with 3 supplies usage only, which means this guy is closer to a 7.5 if we trade him in for supplies and you can take a look at what is the chances of failure over here a lot of time i will work on personnel with four star maybe even five if i'm not too swamped with work but you know it's up to your discretion this guy is quite labor intensive three times four which is a 12 labor over here required but we have a free surgeon so we'll just go ahead and use him up and assign a resting phase for him so that's very nice um we want to make sure our surgeons are well rested but you know sometimes it might come to a very very not fun situation you prefer to work in a cemetery i i know but um kind of running out of steam i'm not gonna lie you're gonna collapse there 
and uh, I don't think I want you to join the cemetery so quickly so I'm gonna okay, come on you're gonna come back here casualty clearing station anyone wants to work there nobody yeah okay never mind I'll just toss someone in there then yes your cemetery does not need to be constantly worked on only when people die you need to work on it because uh let's just say you do not want to have a plague breaking out in your hospital <laughs> let's just put it as that and we'll go ahead and cycle this out we'll have this nurse which is in the operating ward take a break you come in so we'll just cycle the nurse because they are working on 24 hour shift right now which is not ideal but you know what it is what it is. We'll send our one engineer over here, which is almost finishing their break. Come on. Get over here. And we'll have this guy continue resting. We're going to be focusing on producing our band-aids first before our food. Because right now, we have the supplies to work with, right? Sir, as long as we have supplies to work with, we will try to make our band-aids over here. Of course, it's telling us that there is a problem with our rehab center, which is what a lot of other people tend to worry about. But, okay, think about this, okay? We want our nurse to focus on the operating ward to ensure that the doctors are having a very smooth workflow so that we can have a very, um, how do I put this? a high chance of simplification as well as less complication and more success in order to get more resources correct we want to get more resources on hq and we want to save more people so if they are safe already they're going to the rehab station and if it is not very important or like if our rehab center is not too flooded correct we shouldn't really actually focus on a rehab center see those people over here are actually dying those in the rehab center can just sit there and wait until we are no longer swamped with work then we will clear them in so that we can get more requisition papers of course there's an argument to be made that you if you want more requisition papers now you should do the rehab center but for me i like to keep it to around five if Basically, if there is less than five people inside of the rehab uh, rehab center, I won't actually assign a nurse to it because nurse are very very valuable. I put them to the operating ward much more, just because they're kind of um, essential for all this work. So we want to make sure that this work, and we have two more um, casualties to actually aid. And we have our doctor resting right now, so we won't disturb him. This is a one chevron guy with a five medical cost. So yeah, unfortunately, because I don't have the amputation thing right now, you're just going to go inside the decline pile. I'm sorry. You are also going into the decline pile because you are a six, which means uh, you're actually a liability to my whole system. And uh, we want to save the supply to actually um, use it on people that actually needs it. So, bye-bye. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. HQ have not given me enough resources to subsidize your life. <laughs> it sounds a bit morbid. I, I understand. It is morbid. But it is what it is. <laughs> right now, our doctors and nurses aren't doing much over here inside of the operating ward so i'm just gonna go ahead and send them to the rehab center yes because right now our people are doing jack crap and i'm just gonna have them take a break and get people swapped out real quick and we'll have one of engineers swapped out here and the casualty system oh you prefer not to work in a cemetery so you know I'm just gonna... Come on. Why is my mouse acting up today? Our personnel over here, yes, they may be denied and they... To be honest, they don't deserve being put down like this. But unfortunately, I do not have a system that can accommodate them um, very well right now. So I'm gonna have to scrape by just nice. And of course, we have two of these guys. They are recovering right now. We'll take a look later on. You can see over here, 
these are the chevrons that are assigned to each of the characters over here the more chevrons they have after rehab which is this station over here of course once they are done the more combat power they have the second one is of course requisition form the hq will give us if we you know send them back and the third one is our morale which is basically our hp bro your character defies defies the laws of physics well i want you guys to see the time and the clock over here so that you can kind of like get a uh, get a feel of what's the time is what the time is so that you guys don't get confused and like don't don't like get lost and stuff like that so i'm gonna be like sideways so that you guys can see the time you know <laughs> it's uh it's not ideal but it works so you know what if it works it works <laughs> welcome to welcome to engineers and uh, programming if it works don't touch it it's fine don't worry about it and of course one of our patient has uh kicked the bucket and we have a dispatch from hq the 36th division is in retreat Oh my, that is terrible news. <sighs> Another bunch of those poor bastards will be here soon. I'll better check our stocks. What about the hospital? Are we to evacuate the facility? No, sir. HQ gives us no such orders, sir. In fact, there were no orders for us. We have our junk stock. <laughs> stacked up all the way to the max already so that's not ideal we want to make sure that we are constantly making use of whatever resource we have we don't want to have anything slacking correct so we want to go ahead and pick up an upgrade real quick so that we can make use of whatever scrap we have uh let's take a look uh what upgrade can i actually get here i don't think i can actually get any ah I take that back, there is one that I can take over here for Respute. So, there is two ways to go about this. I can either upgrade my warehouse to get more space to store more stuff. Or, I can upgrade the re uh, the reduction time for rest for our units, just so that I have a decrease in my freight somehow. Both ways works, it's just a different way of putting it, so feel free to pick your choice over here but i do need one more requisition form in order to get a warehouse enhancement so yes we're gonna be speeding up and getting through our rehab center over here just so that we can have one person sent to hq and for this guy i do want to send him to the trenches that's the thing but i think i will be able to get away with sending them both even though they are very good back to HQ in order to get more requisition forms I think I should be able to pull it off I'm not very sure <laughs> um, I might get my ass whooped uh, we'll we'll see about that one come on why do you why why does my mouse always act up whenever I try to shoot <laughs> I don't get it <laughs> but okay uh, can I swap out the nurse here thank you and the engineer is taking a break. I think that's fine. Go ahead and speed up. Lieutenant Colonel Angus McFiddler, commanding the 36th. My orders are to set up a temporary line of defense north of here, but I will not be able to do that with our limited forces. I understand. How can we help, Lieutenant Colonel? Heal as many of the soldiers from the front line as possible. Having them reinforce our defensive line will help our men significantly. How many do you need? As many as you can provide, I'm afraid. Intelligence reports suggest that Germans will launch an attack on our position on the 8th of June. Probably around noon. What about reinforcements from HQ? There will be none. Not until the 21st of June, at least. HQ is gathering forces and regrouping for a major counter-offensive. Our orders are to survive on our own until that day. <laughs> on their own? This is a hospital, not a military camp. How do they expect us to manage that? We will be given the best intelligence reports they have. We will know about every attack and the estimated size of the attacking force in advance. That's the best HQ can give us. I understand, Lieutenant Colonel. There are old trenches nearby. You can set up defenses there. We will try to send enough men to survive enemy attacks. 
Okay, now we have the first HQ orders where basically we need to survive. Yes, this will be a long one. <laughs> we need to survive. And of course, first thing we see, there's two few men. So we have to get that checked out. We have to take a look at our CCS because oh boy. <laughs> well, you better get strapped in, uh, doctor, because uh, I am gonna have to get so many people in that uh, you probably lose your sanity. Yes. I am gonna lose my sanity as well. But anyways, we have 9 requisition forms right now, so let's get the less sanity uh, losing part of the thing out of the way so that we actually have uh, a little something something, you know. Let's get this warehouse enhancement ready. We also want to go ahead and get this thing done. So we might be a little shrimp on our workforce over here down the line but uh you know what let me let me just take a take a necessary precaution beforehand so we're just gonna order a little bit more supply from hq because i got a feeling that i'm about to get bold <laughs> so yes we have one guy which is uh kicking the bucket already uh so we need to bury that guy so we need to send one guy to the cemetery you would actually prefer it to be there so that's nice We'll go ahead and get another guy for our casualty clearing station so that people can get processed just a tad bit faster and then this guy will just, you know, fill up the spaces in between. Now, rehab station is not that important now because there is no people in there and everyone is in the operating ward half dead. So let's get down to actually working the operation ward and um, get... Hello, can you go and rest? Please, thank you. And our engineers are gonna be stressed the hell out because we need everything to be working all the goddamn time. So, good luck! <laughs> That's the best I could say, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, let's go ahead and swap this guy out so that he can take a break. So, the next time we need to check back is in 2 hours time and right now it's 7.38, so around 10 o'clock. We need to check back and uh, cycle everything. Uh, I forgot to do one thing, which is actually assigning people to the doctors because I'm a dumb dumb. But uh, anyways, let's take a look over here at the CCS where the first one we have, of course, I'm going to be prioritizing them based on their condition. So if they're good, they're just going to, you know, kick back, relax. Those that are much more closer to kicking the bucket, I will take a look at them first. You are a cause of 842. Is there anything special about you? No, and you have a high chance of failure with almost 20 units of labor. How I calculate units of labor is taking the operation time times the number of stars over here. So this is around 20, sir. So I'm not gonna lie, you are a drag um, on my system over here. The next one will be Krish Arun, which is also high also demanding of uh, around 18 but you cost a little less supply this will be a drag of two on my current system the ones that i definitely can save is this guy because as you here he is a tree chevron which means he will give us a value of 7.5 which covers his expenses over here as well as you know it's not as hard so we'll be able to process more patients. I'm gonna keep them behind just in case I can actually process them once I clear all the ones that are not so good out first. Yes, might be able to save them, might not. We'll see about that one. We'll have to look at it case by case. This fellow over here is also a valuable one as long as we kill him this guy three chevron five costs we will want to clear him but i will say let's get rid of these two first and yeah we'll shorten the line to just those two first so that we can make sure those people that are much more in a severe situation uh, actually get cured first before they just kick the bucket and just say bye have a good time to me and uh, make my bar very red i do not like it when my 
where my bar is very red and my bar is going to be very red because of how um, how I do my stuff <laughs> which is uh, not very ideal but you know what it works and people are being denied denied and our stocks are running low yes for the start this is going to be terrible but you know what it is absolutely fine and see that balance it out just a tad bit so that is fine <laughs> there is a 1 hour 30 minute uh, break on this so 12 o'clock just nice where I want to cycle my I don't know I actually can cycle my uh, people right now we'll go ahead and have this nurse over here just so that we can run their stamina a little bit to the floor we'll go ahead and swap you out so that you don't get too stressed they are already grey so once they are grey normally I pull them out and uh, over here yeah about this one I do want you to pull out, but I don't have a replacement for you. <laughs> uh, this is tough, alright. We'll go ahead and shift them upwards so that we can get one cleared first. That's my um, priority. And how is the CCS doing? You're resting, you're still being operated on, you're in 69%, nice. And uh, 12 o'clock, we should check back in with the doctor and our patients to make sure that none of them kick the bucket while I'm looking away and uh, they seem to be fine you seem to be okay as well we'll go ahead and clear those which are much more severe right now you can see this lightning symbol over here all right when I come out is this lightning symbol over here four star which means they're quite complicated all right so I like to clear those complicated ones first when I have basically jack shit to do <laughs> I like to clear them out first. So if they get cleared out, I have less problems down the line. Which means I can much easier, uh, easily save those people in critical condition. So that's fun. That's good as well. Because more people survive in the long run. Which means, uh, you know, I get to grow my hospital and uh, not get shot by the Germans. Because yes, this game is about war hospital that is in Great Britain in World War One. So yeah, that is the background story of all of these that are actually happening. We do have one guy over here, as you can see. This guy previously was like a two chevrons, so that is two chevrons over here. The black down one basically says that they can never ever recover that back. So it's grayed out. So they have two chevrons over here. We can send him back to the trenches, which uh, I do want to do that because I'm about to get shot tomorrow. <laughs> So, um, let's try to have some bodies <laughs> stuffed up in the front line, shall we? Um, stuff logistics is done. Thank you very much. Yes, they say we actually have an engineer freed up. That is nice. You go ahead and take a break. Thank you. Uh, I think our nurse might be starting to get a little worn out. Our medic team is fine. None of them are a little bit grayish. They look just dandy to me. And casualty, uh, yep, this is what I mean. Yeah, if I have enough time, I'll treat you. If I don't have enough time, I will literally stock you up into a denied pile and uh, you can say good old bye bye because honestly, you're so expensive. <laughs> the only reason why I would pick them up is just because I have a glut of um, resources that I want to use off. But uh, now that they deteriorate to serious already, they are very likely to drop the critical. So I'm just going to clear these guys out and send them to palliative care so that, uh, you know, at least they feel a little bit better while they are kicking the bucket, I guess. <laughs> we'll go ahead and send these two guys in for treatment. That's fine. Let's check on our assignment for nurses. They're starting to be a little bit grey, so that's not ideal. We'll swap out one of them. You're also getting grey, we'll swap you out. Okay, so we'll continue swapping the nurses out, maintaining a max efficiency on our operation ward. Yes, sir. This looks fine. None are awaiting burials. Wait, is there nobody dead already? Oh, there's nobody dead already. Uh, welcome back, I guess. Uh, you can go ahead and take a break since uh, nobody kicking the bucket. Good. The less people kicking the bucket, the more better. Okay, okay. 
we, we do have a very long recovery period over here and as you can see our efforts are paying off four to five already and of course because we have stacked up our operation table so much with all of the nurses we actually get a simplification uh, event which basically makes it so that let's see over here so lightning is energy used by our doctors and down means decrease which means that our doctor basically how do i put this gain back the energy that they have lost so they don't actually have to uh, take much of a break just spend time and our morale went up just a tad bit because uh, i have been uh, allowing so many people kick the bucket so oh that's not ideal but uh, you know i gotta do what i gotta do all right we need our engineers to get back to work over here and uh, we need our warehouse enhancement done as soon as possible um, so that our engineers can go back to actually producing medical supplies but uh, that's not gonna happen as fast as I would like it but it is what it is uh, let's take a look at our nurses yes the nurses are suffering so you guys go and take a break we'll swap you out as well it's fine yes okay carry on around two hour in around six o'clock we'll check back into what our people are doing and i think i just had more people to actually deal with in a C C S. so let's take a look they're both a drag on my system ah pain should i save them I feel like I shouldn't. I, sh I, yeah, I, yeah, I really shouldn't be saving them. I'm giving it a thought, uh, but you know, no, they are, they are drag on my system. No, if they drag on the system for way too long, everything will stop working. So no, I do need to get an amputation tool. Once I get amputation tool, I will be able to save them because they will no longer be such a drag on the system because I cut their lips off <laughs> instead of treating them but on the bright side they get to go back home instead of kicking the bucket in this smelly tent over here so you know at least it's a little bit better they're, they're not just like you know dropping down the bloody bucket like nobody's business well to be honest i am the one causing them to drop down but that's besides the point <laughs> that's besides the point right all right, four out of five. Very nice. And our doctor will take a break over here. You will go ahead and treat this guy and then take a break. Thank you. Yeah, we'll just set them up like this. We need our nurse to actually sort to rehab once our operations are all done. Yes, I am trying to. It's a little bit min maxi, honestly. Uh, when you do it like this, it is involving a lot of clicking, swapping around your manpower and stuff like that. But it is effective to actually make everything work. So on the bright side, you know, stuff is working and nothing is breaking with uh, a 4 to 7 over here. But uh, you do have a whole lot of people inside of the deny pile. Because all of them cost too much. Until I have the chop chop for them. Which means they have to just, uh, you know, hang on tight just a tad bit. If they hang on tight, they might get saved. If they don't, they're definitely gonna be kicking the bucket. Alright, now we have nobody else to actually treat already. We'll go ahead and send our nurse to the rehab center. Oh yeah, you prefer not to work in a rehab center. Well, you take a break first. And I'll have two fellas working in rehab so that everything can get cleared out with a plus 88% speed, which is very nice. And our doctors can just rest and uh, suck on their top. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Alright, let's take a look at our medics. Uh, medic, go ahead and uh, swap you out. I'll have you popped up? No. Who's the one that actually worked? I actually don't know. Wait, did nobody work? Okay. Um, weird. We'll go ahead and send you to the cemetery then. Because I am guessing that there is gonna be a whole ton of... Yeah, um... 
Yeah, that's gonna power up real quick. I had double digit casualties. Um, I'm buried <laughs> in my previous run, which is uh not something to be proud of. Oh no. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, we we just have to make do with what we have. Yes, we'll swap that out and get a new nurse in. And of course, all these are ticking down very quickly, which is very nice. Very nice indeed. We'll wait until uh, they are fully recovered before um, dispatching them to anywhere Sir, right now. You? Yes, what do you need with me? Tell me what's on your mind. I was approached today by one of the civilian that stayed in the city. A man named Theo Blank. He was a stonemason here. According to his words, he customarily made a tombstone for each person buried in the cemetery. But with cemetery requisitioned by the military and so many deceased, he will not be able to because of the sheer amount of work. Well, that is certainly sad. But I don't see anything we could do to help him. Well, I think I have a kind of solution to this problem, sir. There is a significantly seized rock in the cemetery. We could use it to make a sort of memorial stone and carve there the name of each person died or that will die in the future. Mr. Theo Blank volunteered to prepare the stone and carve the name each time the person dies. All that is needed, sir, is your permission. I would be guessing that the big rock is basically this over here. And um, yeah, go ahead and carve the big rock. That's that's fine with me. And as you can see over here, there is a graphical representation of the dead body over here, which uh, is a little tiny bit morbid, but you know, death and taxes. It's the only thing that are ensured to you in life. Anyways, let's swap out a few of these people out and let's have this engineer come on. And can you swap out? So that you can take a break and uh, yeah, you can see over here, he is actually quite close to collapsing, which is not ideal. 5.2, 5.24 um, resting period is uh, quite a long one. Ooh. If you have your people collapsing during their work shift, yeah, they, they will actually take quite a long while to recover, which is around 6 hours, which is not good. Because you can't just tell them to stop taking a break, just in case of emergency. For these two fellas over here, I would actually want to help them. Especially this guy over here. You are not so much in luck. We are going to shove you into palliative care and have you work on immediately because you are 3 chevron personnel. Probably like a general or something. So that is nice. The rest of them is kind of iffy so I'm not gonna be touching them too much yes one person is big worked on let's take a look at our manpower yes I think that is fine we can let it go for a little bit we have a few personnel ready to go already so let's go ahead and actually organize this so as you can see over here there is three pockets over here where we can send them to the front line deal with the germans send them back to hq and get some requisition papers to actually get more resources or just release them from duty so that we can get a little bit more out normally i would say it's not worth it to release them from duty unless is a very dire situation that you're stuck in if not just just don't do it it's not worth it so for this guy first i'm gonna send him to the trench and you can see over here if it's red so i if i'm correct it ranges from four colors red yellow green and blue so green and blue you actually win as well as okay yellow green and blue you actually win but the more the green you will lose less people on blue you will lose even lesser people in terms of casualties during the fight so you would want to try and aim for blue every single time in order to reduce the resources you would need to use to actually heal your personnel so that the next time you don't just start to snowball out of control right if it's red you're gonna die <laughs> so don't leave it at red it's not a good idea all right it's just not good no bueno and in this case with just five chevrons worth we can actually already survive the first one so i think i'm gonna leave it with that can i you know 
Can I pull off a little sneaky over here? Uh, let's see. Okay, I want to... Oh, they already released. Boom. <laughs> I wanted to min-max it just a tad bit, but yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's a little bit of my bad beef. But uh, we'll go ahead and send the rest of them into the HQ pile over here. We will be receiving 11 requisition papers. Yes, we have zero right now, which is uh, very nice. And we have two nurses right now. So we'll try to clear our rehab center in before the new batch comes in and uh, I'll just kick the bucket and uh, kind of flood my hospital because oh boy I had double digits before so it's, it's not good it's not good so always be prepared for the worst you hope for the best but prepare for the worst all right yes we have eight out of eight over here no eight out of eight eight to eight which is mm, it's not bad per se Look, it's a 50% survival rate. It's okay. When you're talking about war. Anyways. <laughs> Savagery, I feel like I need to replace you working there. Yeah, you know what? Let's uh, let's get all of you buried down before anything worse comes. You know, don't want them to stack up. Okay, very nice. Now we have 11 requisition papers. We should always make use of the requisition papers and not just let them sit around. So let's go to improvements and take a look at what we can do. Of course, our engineers are still doing the warehouse because they're taking forever. But it is what it is. <laughs> um, let's take a look see here. Okay, we do want amputation tools. Just so that I can save just maybe one or two more personnel. They, they won't like it, but you know what? At least they're alive, right? <laughs> okay, sorry, I got a nasty cough. Okay, so I'll go ahead and assign the fella in the pharmacy to actually do this. And we'll swap out and maintain the upgrade. Um, what do you call it? Pace. Yes, pace. <laughs> Just so that we can make sure that things are going smoothly. And did that guy survive? I think that guy survived. Hey, that's good. Okay, let's take a look at our nurses. Our nurses are alright. I think nurses are alright. Yes. Our personnel is quite fresh Sir, currently I'm just because of uh, how we did everything. Yes. If you Welcome like to, to the Memorial it, Stone, please. There's a memorial stone here, and uh, you can see how many people actually kicked the bucket already, which is uh, uh, it's 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 a tiny bit morbid, and uh, slowly but surely, I would like to see this actually inside the game over here, right, on this stone, where there's just tiny tiny words or lines just popping up, and then at the end of the game, you have like so much lines that it covers up the whole entire stone. <laughs> oh boy. It is, it is quite a horror, and uh, oh boy, uh, not gonna lie, Chief, uh, I don't think you're gonna make it with a high chance of failure. Yeah, you're 16 labor with high chance of failure, and a 7 cost with a 5 medical supply return rate, which means uh, you're actually a, a drag on the system, unless I can uh, amputate you, which I doubt it, so goodbye. And uh, for you here, my sir, I think, yes, even though he'll be tiring, this is like an 8 unit of um, stress only, so that's not too bad. I'll go ahead and assign this to the well-rested doctor and have him take a break. It's fine. Mm, casualty rates are quite high, but you know what? It is what it is. You take a break now and... I think you will be assigned to the operation ward. You will also swap to the operation ward. While you can continue working on the hep rehab. Now we'll swap you out so that you can take a break. And we will let them run once again. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Reputation is about to get unlocked. Okay. 
Now that amputation is unlocked, <laughs> we can actually save people. Hmm. All right, let's take a look. So many people have been rejected by us. Only three remain. So in this case, in this case, if I amputate them, they will cost fifty percent less resources. Okay. So if they cost fifty percent less resources, and they are amputated they can only be released from duty which means the only thing we can get out of them is morale which is not a bad thing okay if you are below morale in many situations you want to get this so maybe if like you're below 40 you want to get this i would normally not do amputees but for now you know what since my doctors are basically doing jack crap and uh, i can get some morale out of this I don't see this as too bad of a trade because this guy you can treat it as the morale pips they skill the same way so one unit of uh one unit of getting morale over here let's take a look if i can show you here see one percent of morale is one chevron this guy has three chevrons so you'll produce three so in this case over here in the ccs for those people that are denied this guy one chevron produce one percent produce one paper one paper is 2.5 medical supply and this guy will basically cost 3 medical supply only which is not too bad a little bit like if I round up and that's just nice I would normally accept the risk and uh, go ahead with it so you know what for you my fair sir you will be amputated so that you know at least you won't die but I don't want to make use of so much resource that will actually um, drag down my whole damn hospital under the goddamn water so there's that we will amputate you as well how much supply do you cost? you're 5 if I cut you up you'll be costing around 4 so yeah I will be amp amp amputating you unfortunately um, yes critical first We'll go ahead and have this doctor not rest. Finish off this serious patient first. So, critical patient will get treated. You will also get treated. You also get treated. All of them will get treated, but all of them will be amputated. <laughs> On the bright side, they survive. On the bad side, they lose. <laughs> you know what? I, I think that's a fair trade. At the very least, you get to go home. Alright? At the very goddamn least. Jeez. It's uh it's not a bright bright way to see things. It's no idea. Okay, let's carry on. Is there anyone I need to send to the cemetery? No. It seemed good. How is the upgrades doing? Let's take a look see at our stuff for engineers. Ooh, they are they're not doing very good. This guy is getting a little bit toasty you know just a little bit roasty I'll swap you out as well yeah okay that's good engineer has reached the pharmacy which means we have more uh, medicine which is very nice and as you can see with of course our nurses helping out we get more good events so stuff don't go too wrong too many times with all these nice bonuses in our favor so make sure you you know stock up your nurses and um, not make your people kick the bucket which happens way too often and oh boy here comes one of the time events sir we have received a request from hq several bodies has been found nearby likely hit by an artillery strike hq requests us to provide them with a barrier if we do so they will give us staff permits which is very important i need the staff permits so if we want the staff permits we will have to ban to hq and almost all of the time if not all of the time you want to ban and adhere to what hq is doing up doing so Try to try to get that going. All right, we can hire new personnel. Uh, personnel, of course. Right now we don't have the slots for it, but down the line, I probably would expand the nurse the and the medic team. 
maybe even a surgeon team so that we can uh, get stuff processed much faster and I thought that was a bad event that happened <laughs> because bad event that happens is red um, exclamation mark uh, right now I actually don't don't quite understand I know this one over here this exclamation mark is for me not putting any people any of my nurses in the clear in, in the uh, rehab station which is you know done on purpose you know if I put one there I don't get the CCS one by that chance Ah, so they is requesting for a nurse. Okay, I get that now. Because um, how do I put this? It's not that essential for you to put a nurse in the CCS, unless you have like your CCS being swarmed up. Like if you have like I don't know twelve out of ten, because there's just so many people getting you know, striked with artillery and then um, just saying. <laughs> Sometimes you might just have to deal with that and um, your hospital might get swamped and it's just not a good time. It's just not a good time. Alright, we'll have our nurse take a break over here. And we'll send our medic to... You know what? Swap out with the medic that is in the casualty clearing station right now. Yes. At least they're not so stressed. And those people that are really treated, I'm just gonna let them be. Just a, a tad bit because... They don't need to get released straight away, alright? This guy, over here, is a one chevron dude with uh, six costs over here, so we are gonna go ahead and uh, do a little bit of chopping. And um, that's fine, right? We'll do a little bit of chopping and just have him um, cost just a tad bit lesser. Our other doctor is taking a break, so I'm not gonna interrupt that. And here we go. 